A while ago, I made a video showing people who know nothing about selling old coins how to sell old coins on eBay. I'm about to play that video for you next. It's not very long, fortunately, because you're going to wonder, what's wrong with him? He needs coffee. And I probably did need coffee, but I always need coffee. Even right now, you're going to think I don't need coffee. I still need coffee, but it's a calm video. Anytime someone tells you how to do a YouTube video, they say, show lots of action, talk fast, do lots of stuff, do bells and whistles, make lots of noises, you know, throw things on the screen all the time, keep people's eyes moving left and right. You don't get much of that at all in this video, but that's fine. I'm going to tell you what you do get. Gold. You get gold. That means if you don't know anything about selling most of the old coins you're going to run across to sell on eBay, if you don't know anything about that sort of thing, and you just never really wanted to take the time to learn, so you, you don't even pick up old coins, you don't even, if a neighbor says, hey, I'll split these with you if you sell this bag of old dimes on eBay, I'll, you can keep half the profit. What do you do? Well, I don't know anything about dimes. I don't have time to learn. I, I'm, not, I'm not really the best at that. Well, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get by with the least amount of effort on how to know if coins are going to be worth selling on eBay. I tell you how to sell coins on eBay. I tell you how to ship them. I, I go through the whole gamut, but it's only about 10 minutes. It's real short. It's everything that you really need to get started if you don't know anything about selling coins on eBay or if you don't know anything about old coins. This is a great place to start. You don't really need to go into great detail at all in order to make money on eBay with old coins. Don't feel like you need to be an expert on most of the coins you're going to run across. And here it is about to start right now. If you know very little about old coins values, this website, JM Bullion, is a site that you need to bookmark. Even if you know a lot about coins, you should, you should bookmark this site for whenever you want to sell them. What generally happens is you find a bag of wheat pennies or mercury head dimes, silver dimes, or you have a consignment neighbor and she says, I've got all these old silver dollars. I don't know if they're worth anything. Generally, people overvalue old coins. By that, I mean generally people who have a bunch of old coins, they think they're worth a lot more than they are. So number one, that's a problem that you kind of have to, to deal with if you're dealing with a consignment client. And you're going to have to deal with your own disappointment if they're your coins. Because many of them just aren't worth selling by themselves. They'll be worth selling in lots of batches of 25 silver dimes. You can even sell <coughs> buffalo head nickels. Let me show you a buffalo head nickel. Here's one right here. Okay, buffalo nickel. They were made from 1913 to 1938. Surprisingly, not that many years, but seem to be a lot of them out there. Something about these, they, the nickel, or maybe this is just common with nickel, I don't know, but it seems to me like it was a very soft nickel. And a lot of times this date will just be completely rubbed off. You won't be able to tell what the date is. And so what do you do? You have a bunch of old buffalo nickels made before 1939, and you want to know if they're worth any money, but the dates are rubbed off. Well, they're not going to be worth a lot, but buffalo nickels with the rubbed off date, with the buffed off date just through age, through use, through people touching them, they have some value. You can sell those in lots, but they're not going to be worth a lot, in a lot. So you might be able to sell, I don't know the numbers, but I'll just say if you had 50, you might be able to sell those for $20, $19.95, something like that. You know, you just have to do comps and see. So the web page of this site, I'm going to post it right here for you. This is the easiest way to see if any of them are worth any money. Otherwise, just sell them all as a batch of old dimes, okay? So let's go to dimes, go down, I guess, to mercury dimes, mercury head dimes, mercury dimes, liberty dimes. Usually they're called mercury head dimes, made from 1916 to 1945 until the war. And if you have a bunch of you, these are all over the place. I mean, you don't see them every day, but they're very common. There, a lot of them are around still, not because a lot of them aren't worth a lot of money. But here's the way that you use this site. You can read about, well, let me go back. So this is the page you'll bookmark. If you get a bag of dimes, you go to dimes. You scroll down to the dime you have. I believe these are just U.S. coins only. It might be wrong, but I think so. And then you can read more about the mercury dime. Well, do you want to learn about the mercury dime? Probably not. You just want to sell them. Still, click read more. 
And when you scroll down, you'll see the magical chart that we're all looking for. And this is the chart that tells you if any are really worth selling. Now, I don't even consider, okay, let's talk about condition. Good, clear edges, sharp edges, you know, and there's nothing really wrong with the with the mercury head dime. These generally you won't run across unless you're buying a collection. And then good luck with that. That's going to be tough. Coins are pretty tough whenever you just have, you know, a huge collection of coins. What do you value them at? It's tough. It all takes into account current silver prices, possibly current gold prices, just all sorts of things. And then you've got to look at what are they worth today? Do you have an old price guide, a new price guide? That's pretty tough. But we're talking about what often happens, I find, in reselling. You just run across some coins. Are they worth anything? This is the easiest way to find out. They're listed by date from 1916 to 1945. And they tell you, most of the time, as a reseller, you'll be getting good condition coins. Good condition. Really, it has to be really nice to, for you to rate your own coin as fine. Trust me. Because the collectors are fanatics, and whenever they see a fine or an extremely fine coin that they buy and pay $6,000 for, they really expect that coin to be extremely fine, like mint condition. So generally, you should go by this first column with rare exceptions. It's really a nice coin. Move up to fine. I would never try to price your own coin as extremely fine unless you're selling someone's collection. You know they were a collector and they've given you a bunch of dimes to sell and they're going to give you a little bit at a time, which is really the only way to tackle such a collection, I think. One denomination and type at a time, like all Buffalo Head Nickels. Just give me those and maybe give me Mercury Head Dimes and that's all for now. I'll, I'll work on these and then I'll get back to you. It's probably the best way for you to tackle that. Anyway, as you will see, there is in good condition that means, you know, fair condition. There is a 1916 dime worth $4, a 1916 dime worth $4, and a 1916 dime worth $1,000. You really want this D for Denver. That is where the mint is. So this, the D and the S, mean Denver and San Francisco mint. So back in 1916, the U.S. mint in Denver, whenever they would make a mercury head dime, these little letters on older coins in good condition sometimes are hard to find. You're, I mean, hard to read. You're going to have to use your loop. Don't guess. You, you really need to know what it is if you're going to ask $1,000 for a coin in just so-so condition. But the mint is where it really determines a lot of value. So generally, it's scarcity that determines the value. Anyway, you just scroll through this list. Do you sell a coin that's worth $3? I wouldn't. Do you sell 10 coins worth $3? Yeah, yeah, you know, a lot, lot those up. Now remember, you can use for coins eBay's standard envelope. So for one coin, I think one coin will ship one dime, especially, maybe two or three, four, five, will ship for a one ounce rate. So you can ship, you can list individual coins and ship them standard envelope rate and charge your buyer only cents and you only pay cents and you get tracking that's specific with ebay it's got some rules the the, the sale can't be for over twenty dollars and you are limited on the number of coins you can put in an envelope you can read the rules if you want but you don't you know you, you can do you want to sell a four dollars and fifty cent coin i don't know if it's on consignment probably not if it's yours maybe and just, you know, put standard envelope and charge your buyer 63 cents. They don't mind paying $4.50 plus 63 cents shipping. That's reasonable. And you get it out of your way, you know, and it's $4.50 after expenses, whatever it is. Not a lot of money, but, you know, what, what kind of pictures? You can't take 24 pictures of a coin. You take front, back, edge, another angle, another angle. That's about it, you know. So... Three, four, five pictures is all most you can do. List it real fast. Say good condition. They'll buy it. It's up to you if you want to mess with it. But you just scroll through here. So I would get all of your coins out, all of your mercury head dimes, your bag of dimes. Last time I got from a neighbor, he gave me in an old prescription pill bottle a bunch of his buffalo nickels. Okay, pour them all out. I would sort them by date and then just go down this list. Do I have any 1916? Yes. Is it a Denver Mint? No. Okay. Do I have, scrolling down, notice there really aren't many of these worth money at all. As a matter of fact, I didn't plan this. These aren't worth much at all. Mercury head dimes aren't worth much at all. There is one right 
here for 80. It's also Denver Mint. Notice that 80. That's kind of hidden. The, the regular non-Denver minted 1921 dime is worth $65. So you know you want to you want to watch for these. These are what I'm looking for. These are all I really care about in this chart. I want the thousands, the 65s, the 80s. Now let's let's go a little bit slower. $13. Yeah, I would sell a Mercury Head dime for $13 if I found in my list, you know, my sorted list, a 1926 San Francisco Mint Mercury Head dime. Here's one for eight, hidden in the rough. 1931 Denver Mint, $8. Okay, you know, you'd sell that. If it's worth a little bit more, you'd ask $10 or $12 for I mean, if it's a little bit better than good, you'd ask, you know, $9, $10, 11 12, up to $12 for it. Don't ask $35 unless it's really in mint condition. And on down. So we only have not many mercury head dimes at all just a small handful my handful you know there's like four dimes here worth money let's go back and look at one more let's go to uh lincoln head pennies lincoln i'm uh, not lincoln wheat yeah lincoln wheat pennies we'll look at wheat pennies let's look at these from 1909 to 1958 come on it's not showing the back of it i'm surprised but anyway on the back of this is a it's a, a, the the wheat penny logo surely you've seen it uh I thought they would show this. I'm surprised at that. This isn't just a regular penny like most of us grew up with. It's It has something else on the back. But anyway, wheat pennies, there are a few more of these you'll find that are worth some money, even in good condition. $100, $17, $50, $24, $7, $14, $200, $20. So this is a good chart. You know, you have a bunch of Lincoln wheat head pennies, nine dollars, six, even even sixty in 1931. That's not that old when it comes to old coins, but you know, you still want to check it out and see if any are worth any money. And there aren't any more worth money. And after oh, fifteen cents, you know, after 1934, 1934, just. Don't even look them up. They're not worth messing with. They're just not. Most coins, just like most record albums that you find at garage sales, just like most books that you find, although books you'll find a few more worth selling in a big batch of books over record albums in a big batch of albums. And I think you'll find a few more record albums than coins in a big batch of coins. And I think you'll find more coins worth selling in a big batch of coins than stamps. Stamps are the the hardest things I've ever valued before because there are so many nuances and stamps made in different years can look identical and they, the only change, the only difference is the number of little little curly cues. Whenever you tear off the stamp, you know it's got that scalloped edge. The number of scallops up there or on the side determines what year that stamp is. It's really tough. Stamps are hard. Most stamps aren't worth anything, even old stamps. So anyway, but I think coins are a lot easier than stamps, especially with Jay and Williams, these charts. These charts are all you need. So what I want you to do is just go to the website, go to the home page, and just, no, let me go back, sorry. I wouldn't go to the home page. I would go to the coin page, which is here. That's what I bookmarked for you earlier. And this is where you can look up all of the coins from half cents, all even half cents, right? Since two cents, surely there are half cents. There's a half cent, okay, all the way, you know, Indian head pennies. You can look up all the all the half cents and up, all the way to the silver dollars and gold coins in nice charts that make things really easy for you.